Now let us move into two variable regression model for interval estimation. So you guys can also see, uh, I've created a basic econometrics playlist. So you can see all the videos there. So just click on that. I'll give you the link on uh, in, in, the, in the description. You can have a look at that. And uh, so you will have all the videos in, in one place. Okay, so now uh, what is the meaning of interval estimation? So the main idea is that instead of relying on the point estimate alone, means up until now you have calculated what beta one hat, beta two hat is. So we are saying that instead of relying only on beta two hat, that particular value, why don't we create an interval around that, that beta two hat, right? That interval could be two or three standard deviations from either sides of that beta two hat. So that is the meaning of that uh, interval estimation. So instead of relying on the point estimate alone, we'll create an interval around it. So please write. Instead of relying on point estimate alone, We may construct an interval around the point estimate. around the point estimate, right? So uh, maybe two or three standard deviations uh, on either side, on both sides of that point estimates. Say two standard deviations or three standard deviations on either side of the point estimator. The point estimator, right? Such as this interval, I mean, the, the main reason you are uh, creating this interval is so that you can say that with some probability, okay, that uh, beta two hat can lie within that interval. Right now, uh, we are not saying that this particular beta two hat is going to be there in the particular interval. No, 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 no. We are just saying that there is a probability attached to creating such an interval, which will create the, which will contain this point estimate. So this will get uh, clearer slowly. Let's write it together and then I'll explain such that. But that this interval as say ninety five percent probability including the true parameter value. This is the main idea about the interval estimation. Uh, second point is, so we, we have calculated beta two hat. And we know what is the true value of beta 2 hat. That is beta 2. We want to find out how close is this beta 2 hat to beta 2. The true value of beta. Right.
we want to find out. How close beta 2 hat is to beta 2, right? Uh, so we need to find out certain things for that, right? Uh, hum kya karenge? We have true value of beta 2. We have beta 2 hat here, right? So we can subtract delta from beta 2 hat and we can add delta to beta 2 hat. This is the interval. This guy is the interval. And we are saying that this probability is, let's say, equal to 1 minus alpha. Probability is equal to 1 minus alpha. I'll tell you what exactly all these are. Uh, don't you think this is like a random interval? Your beta 2 hat minus delta, comma beta 2 hat plus delta. That's an interval. Right? So this is nothing but the confidence interval. This entire thing. This entire thing. This alpha is called the level of significance. Level of significance. This is nothing but the confidence coefficient. Confidence coefficient, right? Uh, beta 2 hat minus delta. This is the lower confidence limit. Beta 2 hat plus delta is upper confidence limit, right? Uh, so we are trying to say that, uh, and this alpha is, uh, is lying between 0 to 1, right? So alpha is the level of significance. So we generally check this at, uh, I mean, in in the parallels of econometrics, we generally say, okay, we want to check it at check it at one percent, right? So that one percent is what this alpha is, right? Okay. So um, I I'll tell you what exactly this one percent, two percent, or five percent would mean. So, but we we need to write all this first of all. Let's look at this interval again. Uh, Note that we are not saying, what we are not saying is very important. We are not saying that this particular interval, you say, Dekhi, beta 2 hat would be some value. Delta is some value. Manage beta 2 hat is 0. 0.3. Delta is 0. 0.1. So 0. 0.3 minus 0. 0.1, comma 0. 0.3 plus 0. 0.1. So that's an interval. We are not saying that the true value of beta 2 will lie in this particular interval. That probability is uh, 1 minus alpha. We are not saying that. What we are saying is that on the long term sampling, I mean, if we keep on doing the repeated sampling, the probability that with which uh, we can create such an interval, which would include beta 2, the true value of beta 2, that is 1 minus alpha. हम ये नहीं कह रहे कि true value of beta 2 इस particular interval में होगा, उसकी probability 1 minus alpha है. Guys, think about it. Supposedly, if I say, if I am uh, saying that this is the interval, right? This is the interval. Now, my beta, true value of beta 2 is 0 0.3. What is the probability that 0 0.1, 0 0.2 will contain 0 0.3? 0, right? Or let's say, uh, this thing is uh, beta 2 hat is 0 0.15. What is the probability that 0 0.1 comma 0 0.2 will contain 0 0.15? 1, 100%. So particular interval will either carry that true value of beta 2 or it won't. We are just saying that in repeated sampling, we will be able to create such intervals which will create, uh, sorry, which will contain this true value of beta 2 with this probability. Such intervals which will contain true value of beta, right? So these are the points to be written very, very uh, 
carefully. Please write above expression. Does not say. That the probability of beta 2 lying between these limits is 1 minus alpha. Right. Um, because True value of beta 2, although it is an unknown number, but that's a fixed number. Either this particular interval will contain this beta 2 or it won't. Right. Since beta 2 although an unknown is assumed to be a fixed number. Either it lies in the interval or it does not, right? The line which I'm writing is very important for your exam also. It is only stating that the probability that we can construct such an interval which may contain true value of beta 2, that is 1 minus alpha. We are not saying that this particular interval is going to create, is going to contain beta 2. That probability is either 1 or 0. If it contains, that probability is 1. If it doesn't contain, that probability is 0. Right. It states that the probability of constructing an interval. that contains beta 2 is 1 minus alpha. Right. Is 1 minus alpha. This interval itself is a random interval. Why? Because it is dependent upon beta 2 hat and beta 2 hat is random. Huh? This interval is dependent upon beta 2 hat. Yes. So if beta 2 hat itself is random, then this is also random. Such an interval is a random interval. Because it will vary from one sample to the next. Because it is based upon is based upon beta 2 hat, which itself is random. 
which itself is random. So you have to understand this confidence interval in terms of a repeated sampling, in terms of long run, right? Long run sense. Uh, then uh, I'm again repeating this stuff because this, in case of the question comes from this, it is going to be based upon this concept only. In the long run, the probability that we will be able to create such an interval which will contain this true value of beta 2, that is 1 minus alpha, not a particular interval containing true value of beta 2, that is 1 minus alpha. That probability is either 0 or 1. Right? So, if in a repeated sampling, Confidence intervals like it. Are constructed. Great many times. On 1 minus alpha probability basis. Then in the long run. On an average. Such intervals will enclose even minus alpha of the cases. The true value of the parameter. true value of the parameter. Right? Hmm? So remember this. Uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the confidence interval uh, for beta 1 and beta 2. Right? And for population variance. So we'll try to complete up uh, that part tomorrow. Okay, so I hope it was useful to you. Thank you. Very much.